Hello, hello, hello. My name is Matthew Schertz, also known as Matheus. Uh, I'm, we're transi- transmitting here from a very exciting studio in the city of Sao Paulo, uh, Brazil. I will be the anchor for the Brazil channel. Um, I'm a journalist, in case you're interested, uh, specialized in science and sustainability. Uh, today, we're going. our first uh, discussion will address... Uh, the adaptation of the Brazilian consumerist legislation to the OECD standards. You might not know, but Brazil has a long relationship with the OECD, and over the last few years, it has has begun to harmonize its regulations uh, to meet with the standards of the organization in order to become a full member. Our question is, is can this be a sustainable relationship? To address it, we have two exceptional guests, Juliana Oliveira Domingos, who is Consumers National Secretary at the Ministry of Justice. She's a professor of economic law and antitrust law at the University of Sao Paulo, and was a visiting scholar at Georgetown University. She also presides the National Committee of Consumers Defense and the National Anti-Piracy Committee. Joining her will be Enrique Leon, Head of Public Affairs at Protest. Enrique has a PhD in philosophy from the University of Sao Paulo and a master's in history from the University of Campinas and has held leadership positions in all sectors of the world, government, private sector, not-for-profit organizations, and academia. Guys, take it away. Professor Dr. Juliana Domingues, thank you so much for being with us taking part of the International Forum by Euroconsumers. We're very happy and very proud to have you here. As an international organization, we are very excited to keep track in your work, a friend of Senacom, our National Secretary for Consumers. You are taking the lead in fundamental issues for consumers and trying to put every actor on board. You have refunded the Brazilian National Consumers Defense Council and you have a pro-competitive approach that pleases very much. So could you share with us what are your challenges, your plans for the next months, the next years? So first of all, I would like to thank you for this uh, fantastic opportunity to participate in such an important forum and showcase the latest uh, consumer policy developments in our National Secretariat for Consumer Affairs that we call here Senacom. In 2020, uh, the main challenge to Senacom, I I think, and as to other national consumer authorities, has also been the pandemic. Since the beginning of the pandemic in March, Many problems arose in Brazil and we are facing several negative externalities that may transfer to our society the costs that should be uh, internalized by producers and service providers. Uh, Of course, this picture only reinforces what I am saying to our consumer system. We must create bridges and promote an environment that can improve a good communication and protect consumer rights without eliminating uh, competition and innovation. Uh, It was not easy to promote uh, consumer protection during the coronavirus outbreak, which has uh, imposed the difficult task to balance the maintenance of the contracts uh, in this scenario of potential loss of income due to the financial economic crisis caused by the pandemic. I think, uh, as we all know, the challenges posed by coronavirus connected consumer protection issues with uh, also personal data protection and e-commerce. And we could observe the need to develop new tools to protect specifically vulnerable consumers. Uh, And we have some specific policies for consumers with disabilities. 
Besides, we are structuring the National Consumer Protection Board to uh, harmonize consumer relations and reduce the legal uncertainty in Brazil. The Brazilian system is very complicated uh, as we have a country with continental dimensions with different regional approaches and we have uh, several consumer demands to deal with. Of course, in the months and years to come, uh, I think that consumer protection policy here must be linked to the OECD best consumer uh, policy making practices. Uh, and as for the question, I have established some uh, priorities for next months with my team. Uh, thus, regarding the priority list, I would like to highlight some of them. Can I? Of course, please share with us. Okay. So we are working hard for the adhesion of Senacom to OECD Committee on Consumer Policy as a participating member and we hope to incorporate all OECD recommendations on consumer protection. We also work in Brazil uh, a lot né, to uh, make the accession to the eConsumer.gov, an international platform where consumers can report uh, transnational consumer frauds. Another important goal uh, is the promotion of the Brazilian platform consumidor.gov.br. Our platform is an essential tool that helped a lot the consumers during the pandemic. And we now have a net version for mobile devices here in Brazil. And the Brazilian reality is very unusual. Né? We have this high level of uh, judicialization uh, and it is a problem that has been highlighted in several research, uh, especially some conducted by the National Council of Justice. My team uh, told me that uh, the official data shows an increase in the stock of the cases pending judgment. And it's also important to understand that consumer related procedures account for more than 10% of the new lawsuits according to the data provided by National Justice Council. We have more than 8 million lawsuits pending before the pandemic. Uh, so, uh, to develop new strategies to deal with this scenario, Senacom hired a technical consultant who is sponsored by the United Nations contract. And uh, as I mentioned before, we have also the National Consumer Defense Council uh, working with this. Uh, we have a specific commission dealing with alternative dispute resolution methods. So we must improve our ODR, consumidor.gov.br. Uh, it is a very important platform, but we are working on the development of alternative dispute resolution uh, methods, including mediation, self-regulation, co-regulation. And I think it's so crucial to be open to these different instruments which happens to be more effective than the Brazilian current judicial system. Uh, I think it is also important to mention that two months ago, we launched a new public policy to consumers with disabilities. We realized that during the pandemic that we must uh, work in, uh, in some new tools because uh, we have 30 million consumers with visual impairments according to the Brazilian Institute of Geographic and Statistics and they were very affected by the pandemic. Uh, uh, during the pandemic, we also realized that the modernization of the consumer, uh, consumer service uh, system that we call here SAC is necessary. We have a grill uh, around 66% during the pandemic to, to do it to the low quality of the service provided. And we know that uh, in the beginning it was very difficult uh, to um, be uh, able to assess the call centers, uh, spe specifically because since uh, many of them were closed, but after 18 months without any improvement, we need to create more efficient channels in solving consuming demands. I think this topic is currently being discussed in a technical commission, which is part of the National Consumer Defense Council, and we will have uh, this discussion with consumer protection uh, agencies, regulatory agency, uh, we have trade associations and uh, even people uh, re uh, with disabilities, they are also helping to discuss the best tools that we must develop 
and we have a very big space to bring uh, suggestions and opinions. I know that we will follow the other questions, but I must share with you that we are also improving tools to empower the Brazilian consumers offering uh, virtual programs on financial education. Mm. We, we have focused on promoting financial education and fighting uh, abusive and predatory practices that may target vulnerable people. And we have the National School for Consumer Protection inside Senacom, uh, providing specific programs and they are all online. So uh, we have organized a great number of debates and events, workshops regarding financial education for consumers. And we are also promoting initiatives to fight piracy in the e-commerce. We have already two different guidelines with the addition of very important economic groups. Uh, we are working on recall policies. Uh, recall is still one of our priorities in our agenda. So in the next months and years to come, I think that besides being li li very linked to OECD best consumer policy making uh, practices, we, we still need to follow uh, the technological developments which impact, of course, in all uh, consumption relations and machine learning, internet of things, big data, uh, everything is some, uh, we, we need to follow very close to develop our uh, consumer policies. Just to finish, I'd like to say that we are still facing a very challenging moment and to fully address all these new challenges brought up by the pandemic, we need to speed up the new policies pace already underway. Besides, we are reinforcing a comprehensive and a more uh, transversal uh, analysis of the relations uh, involving consumers, governments and companies. And I think that at this moment we must create much more bridges and promote an environment that can improve new tools to protect consumer rights, but without eliminating competition and innovation. Thank you so much for the wonderful summary. You have touched so many important <laughs> sensitive issues, alternative methods of dispute resolutions, tools for disabled people, e-commerce, the OECD factor, as we call it, so, so many things. Maybe we could explore a little bit more the OECD thing, since we are an organization uh, which was born inside the OECD area. Protest in Brazil is our only organization from the group outside the OECD. And we are very, very convinced that if Brazil becomes a full member of OECD, it's going to be a very um, added value for consumers. So you touched this point already. So briefly, do you see that we still have a regulatory gap to be filled in order to become a full member of OECD in terms of consumption relations, or we are close to become a full member? Right. Yes, uh, we have the so-called consumer protection equis. Right? It is not only the seven recommendations on the area to be approved, but it also involves a wide number of other transversal disciplines. We must implement a regulatory reform and we are, of course, preparing our team to deal with regulatory impact analysis. Uh, it's very important. Policymakers in the consumer field must understand about data protection, competition policies, and all OECD documents uh, involve these uh, kind of uh, issues, right? We could see it inside the toolkits, guides, and guidelines from OECD. And of course, here in Brazil, I think that we are moving fast toward the goal of becoming OECD effective consumer protection country. But however, it is still, uh, everything is very recent for us, right? Uh, we cannot compare Brazil with uh, the institutions and the countries that have over 20 years of participation at the OECD. Mm -hmm. And as you, we, we all know, Brazil, uh, started this uh, process to become a member of OECD specifically in 2017 and from 2017 to today there have been many achievements and uh, challenges concerning our participation in OECD. In 2018 uh, we formally added to two OECD recommendations 
right? And but this year, I think it was very important because in July we uh, added to the new recommendations on consumer product safety, uh, and we are the only non-member country. Uh, adherent to this recommendation. I think mm -hmm. the implementation of this new recommendation is an uh, absolute priority to the OECD in consumer protection for the next years. And it is also here in Brazil, right? So it's important to mention that Senacom uh, started this movement. I think it is very important. Uh, and of course, this year we became a participant of the OECD CCP formally. Uh, it was recent, was in August of this year, and we are very pleased about it. But uh, by the way, uh, in this challenging year of 2020, Senacom has uh, accomplished many significant uh, milestones in the international arena, and I think OECD, uh, in fact, is a priority for us, right? Uh, this is a very important year for us in Brazil. We celebrated the 30th anniversary of our Consumer Defense Code, uh, yeah. and I think that we received a great gift, the Senacom addition to the, the e-consumer cross-border platform after the fulfilling the addition requirements as a new participant of the CCP, the Committee on Consumer uh, Policy from OECD. Uh, once our addition is confirmed, we will be part uh, fully uh, from the OECD ECRIS on consumer protection. Uh, then for 2021 uh, and the following years, I think we will face a big challenge to implement not only the seven OECD consumer protection recommendations, but it involves uh, uh, legislative, uh, different policies, changes inside our body and updates uh, as well. I think an institutional reform uh, will be improved to uh, give more structure to Senacom. I believe that the next steps will increase uh, also the visibility of our national consumer policy. And uh, I'm very glad to be part of this moment uh, in Brazil. And I, I believe that our team is prepared to face the challenges that we will face in the next year. Fantastic. Uh, last year, we were one of the Brazilian organizations invited by the WCD mission on telecommunications for an interview to share impressions. Uh, the interview was at our national telecommunications agents, Anatel, in a very Republican attitude, we invited all the organizations. And in my interview, I tried to highlight not only problems when telecoms uh, work for consumers, but also regulation problems that impede the companies to have a better deployment. For instance, some regulations like the antenna laws, the pulverization of regulation among the entities of the Brazilian state, the federal sphere, states and municipalities, and how this is difficult for companies also uh, to go deeper in the service to consumers because they have so many obligations and pulverization. But my question to you is how do you see Senacom uh, working together, Anatel and other regulatory agents when a, a specific area involving consumers' relations is regulated by a national agency? Right, it's a very good question. And uh, yes, consumer protection and the sectorial regulation, uh, they are very connected, especially in the telecom sector. They are deeply uh, related. And considering our participation on OECD, um, we need to reveal many legal and policy frameworks uh, on different economic sectors. Uh, the same happens with the Consumer Protection Economic Framework. In 2019, Senacom participated in the first uh, Going Digital a project, for example, and we uh, prepared a contribution, a very important one for the chapter four uh, related to the document enhancing trust in the digital economy uh, for, for going digital uh, Brazil 2020. And it's, it's, it is something that we must follow together. As for the question, I think that beside 
the interna uh, internalization of the OECD uh, full regulatory competition and data protection uh, policies and also consumer protection equities, I mean all the legal instruments. We believe that one important key is the work uh, inside the National Consumer Defense Council because we have Anatel inside the National Consumer mm -hmm. Defense Council. And as I mentioned before, uh, the Council is the new public forum where different federal regulatory uh, competition and consumer protection bodies, they are discussing different policies and policies intersections with uh, interdisciplinary approach. And it includes, of course, regulatory and competition issues. Uh, inside the Council, we have uh, other federative bodies as state PROCOMs that we have several in Brazil. Uh, and we have private sector representatives from consumer and business associations. They are also talking with uh, the, the regulatory bodies, just like Anatel and with Senacol. So I believe that the cooperation among the government instances uh, is very important to ensure uh, the consumer protection. And this is, best, it is very uh, important uh, when you talk about a country uh, with uh, many overlapping institutions, as we have here in Brazil, right? Uh, with many shared competences and responsibilities. Uh, when I am talking about telecom, I am also talking about consumer problems related to telecom. And sometimes telecom and competition, they, they, they need to talk together too, because they have different policies. And, but we have a common uh, ob objectives, right? And we have specific goals uh, from each body. Therefore, this dialogue is essential for any public policy to be successful. And the OECD telecommunications and broad uh, broadcasting per review report pointed out the need for a more a strong and durable connection between Senacom and Anatel. Uh, and I, I believe the same could be said about other regulated markets such as civil aviation, health, pharmaceutical. Uh, in the case of regulatory uh, markets, uh, markets that are regulated in Brazil, uh, cooperation is sometimes critical as these markets may create difficulties for less uh, special, specialized bodies that are not very familiar with the market. But sharing data and exchanging views, uh, this can uh, help us to solve and to develop better public policies. And we intend to take part in a more effective communication with other regulatory agencies and we started it uh, in 2019, I believe. Uh, the, we have a great example now during the pandemic. We have uh, relations with uh, different bodies and regulated sectors to develop some agreements that we call in Brazil tax. Uh, and we have a very good example uh, with Senacom and Brazilian Airlines regarding the coronavirus pandemic. And we know that uh, a successful policy requires from us a more uh, comprehensive perspective, taking into consideration the needs of the consumers, but also the situation of uh, the, uh, the regulatory market, right? In the civil aviation sector, for example, we saw it this year. Now, the National Civil Aviation Agency provided very uh, important information and data about the sector for us, and it mm. aided my team to understand what was possible in the context and, and the best outcomes for our consumers. Uh, but we are making uh, some important efforts. Uh, we are very open to, uh, you know, uh, dialogue. And I think so, uh, civil society is also much more uh, close uh, with us now, uh, especially because we have the Council. Uh, and the National Consumer Defense Council uh, is a body that can help us to 
have a better relation with uh, the national telecommunications agents like Anatel, mm -hmm. uh, but we have others, right? And it's uh, a specific commission that we have now a specific commission inside the council that is ex exploring uh, specifically the Brazilian regulatory system. And we are emphasizing the, the relationship between the agents and the consumers. We think we, we can build it together and we are doing a very good uh, work inside this commission uh, that is uh, represented by Anatel. Thank you very much. It was a very good explanation. Uh, the Europeans assume they have a very complex framework with national regulations plus the European Commission, the European Parliament, the European Council. But when we explain to them <laughs> the structure of a Brazilian public policies and regulations, they are amazed at how complex <laughs> it is and how difficult to navigate it is, especially doing those uh, interministerial uh, bridge, as you mentioned, so th this is very important. So uh, the National Data Protection Authority, of course, is very important, especially in the relationship with companies, with big companies, but we are very concerned with individuals, since uh, the Brazilian law uh, follows in many aspects the European law, Brazilians are very different consumers from the Europeans, maybe closer to the American consumers, so I would hear, like to hear from you, how do you see the relationship between Senacom and the new National Data Protection Authority taking into account the interests and rights of Brazilian consumers? Right. Uh, well, Senacom uh, had already been dealing with uh, data protection and privacy issue as uh, we have a consumer protection and defense department, right, uh, that started to investigate uh, several uh, uh, conducts involving personal data violations before the law, the, our consumer law. Uh, for instance, we find it uh, recently a very important fashion company for using, for example, uh, facial, um, facial recognition uh, technology uh, without the consumer's consent uh, and it is also a consumer violation, right? So it is data protection but it's also a consumer uh, violation. Uh, nonetheless, the legislation offers new protection against uh, privacy violations and it also creates uh, further legal safeguard for consumers. I think it represents significant uh, consumer rights progress even though uh, the law makes an, uh, an, a an agent that now will deal with this issue, right? Uh, the National Data Protector Protection Agency uh, is a, sp a space uh, now that they will take care much more about the data protection. And we are taking care of consumers, but sometimes it involves data protection too. And, and it is clear that Senacom, we also play a key a uh, hole in data protection concerning consumer related matters. As such, uh, in the foreseeable future, I think Senacom intends, uh, of course, to cooperate with uh, this new agency and probably we will establish um, a cooperation, right? Uh, specifically uh, to ensure consumer welfare. Uh, although uh, we have already a significant concern for consumers' authorities worldwide and in UECD countries uh, related to digital service. Uh, and we, we have now problems with social media. Um, we have uh, some different platforms with our uh, information. And it's much more relevant to be very close to this new agency to give them support because we have several investigations related to digital services as consumer safety and welfare on the internet. It is also a priority in these times. Uh, so we are thinking about drafting an agreement uh, to formally cooperate with this new agency, uh, considering that we have some overlaps and that our consumer code also protects consumer data. And I think we will have uh, space right, to develop uh, some uh, 
public policies together. I, I am very happy to have now the National Data Protection Agency because we just can go further investigations that are related to consumer problems. And uh, we will probably give support in this beginning, uh, considering these cases that we have at Senacom. And I think that these agents must be uh, involved in all the public policy discussions that we have when we think about the problems worldwide. Thank you, uh, Professor Juliana. Uh, representing protests, I would say that Brazilian consumers are very fortunate to have such a brilliant lawyer, jurist, teacher like you as our consumer protection first officer. And uh, we want to support your work. So my last question for you is if you foresee any kind of collaboration between an international consumers protection organization like ours and your important work. If you foresee, we will be very happy to support, but I let you say it, if you see some sort of possible collaboration. Of course. So first, thank you. I, I just love when uh, call, they, they call me professor <laughs> because it is something that I am. <laughs> but uh, of course, we have, I think consumer protection organizations play a crucial role in bringing information and promoting consumer rights in a very democratic uh, and accessible way. Uh, as it is the tradition of our federal public administration, uh, Senacom always promotes uh, transparency and dialogue with all stakeholders. Uh, the profile of a more technical consumer association, just like protest, is essential to consumer protection in Brazil. Uh, you are doing a very important work in Brazil and hopefully Senacom and Protest have a significant interaction, right? Protest has space in our initiatives and public policies and I hope to have you collaborating in this new modern and international consumer protection agenda in Brazil. I am sure that we can do a lot together and it's an honor for me to have the support from protest. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for us to contribute to, with your important work and it was more than a pleasure to have your brilliance here in our Consumers Forum 2020. Thank you so much for taking part. Thank you so much for this invitation.